Hi viewers, this is Venkar. Uh, I am interviewing for Edina, which is a Karnataka and a Kannada media house, a community media house. It tries to aggregate the views and the community voices within Karnataka. And today it's an absolute pleasure to have someone who's been walking a tight rope walk. And I wanted to qualify. This rope was made of silk uh, because it was even more difficult than the usual tight rope walk. Uh, Gurdeep Sapal ji is with us. And we're going to interview him. And to say the least, that six months before, uh, it looked like the Indian politics is going through a one-way traffic. The media narrative was completely telling us that this char so par. Uh, it looked like everybody was disaggregated. There is no unity. Uh, and the most importantly, people are saying the political parties are not together. And a lot of the things were also in, uh, in the hands of Congress, it looked like. So they had a very tough role to play and within that could be being a part of Malikarjun Kharge's office and working with the India Alliance it looked like they have uh, pulled out a magical magic rabbit out of out of nowhere but when we say this there's a lot of hard work behind it uh, there is a lot of narrative work there's a lot of mobilization work in it nothing of this kind can happen uh, in politics specifically um, like like a magic show uh, even in magic show, a lot of work goes behind. We only see what happens at the end. So on the day when we were very surprised, uh, I, I think a lot of work had already gone in. Maybe the numbers could have been surprising from one place to the other. Uh, I think a perfect guesswork or a perfect cephalogy doesn't work, exist. But still, a lot of work had gone behind it. And I thought this is a good way to interact with uh, G and know a little bit more about what happened. And then... More importantly, what are the plan in, in the future? So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, absolutely. Thank you. Welcome to you. Thank you. Thanks a lot for inviting me. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. So the first question to you would be, what's your overall reaction to the election results? The election results uh, have given a new hope to people of India. Um, you see, many people were uh, of the view that now there's a dominant ideology of Hindutva, which has come to rule uh, India now. And anybody who talks of secularism, anybody who talks of uh, pro-poor uh, policies, who talks of public sectors, uh, who talks of uh, econ economy, which is uh, pro-poor, has no space left. Because such was the narrative built around Mr. Modi for last 10 years, that everybody thought that this, it's a one-way traffic. One-way traffic, if you do not compromise, with the RSS ideology, you have no space in Indian politics. That has been shattered. Now people know, yes, there's an alternative space which is available. You can fight elections in this country on the basis of your own ideology, which is liberal, secular ideology, ideology of republican values, constitutional values. These, there's a space for this and not just a space. Uh, more than 50% people actually want uh, India, which does not ascribe to RSS worldview. So uh, this confidence has come back. This is the biggest achievement of this election. And I must tell you, when these elections were being planned and we were, and in many interviews, I myself uh, articulated it, that our biggest challenge was to motivate our leaders and workers, to motivate our voters that yes, Modi can be defeated. Yes, there's an election on hand. Yes, it's not a single way uh, highway uh, where nobody else matters. So this motivation was our biggest challenge. And now I think once this is done, in the coming days and years, people will now realize that there's a life beyond propaganda. There's politics beyond propaganda. And this is the this is something which is now uh, going to stay for another 10, 15 years. This confidence will stay with people of India for at least 10, 15 years now. I, I love the fact that you say it's about confidence is going to stay for 10, 15 years. I gave the example uh, in one of the discussions that this was like Lagan. Mm -hmm. Bhuvan had to get people from everywhere. And, you know, Bhuvan in Lagan film had to fight the East India Company in that Lagan film. It looked like many people came together from everywhere. And finally, Bhuvan had to uh, fight a very difficult battle. 
did you think that the battle was uneven like the way Bhuvan had to fight in Lagan? Did you think that way? And uh, how would you detail it out as a person within the political system? Well, we were confident that we are capable of fighting this battle. But the battle was being fought on an uneven field. There was nothing which you can say a fair chance being given to the opposition. Number one, now we all know, they tried to starve us of the funds. Our accounts were frozen right before the elections. And not just accounts were frozen. In past uh, few years, anybody who donated money to opposition parties and to Congress party, uh, the agencies would haunt them, literally go after them. And why have you donated to Congress party or some other opposition parties also? B, you have seen the misuse of agencies. The agencies were unleashed uh, uh, against the uh, political parties. The leaders were taken away. The parties were split. The governments were usurped. So that is the second part. And third part was the media support. Anything that we wanted to say would just not be covered by media. Media spoke only in one voice, which was his master's voice. That was there. So without money, without institutional framework, which ensures a level playing field, and without media support, and without this impression that election commission is going to ensure a free and fair election, many people did not uh, agree with the uh, assertions of election commission. And it was not so, because this was uh, we have seen election commission in action before also. It was never so that all our complaints used to fall on deaf ears. Yes, they acted on those complaints, but the action was such that it meant nothing. So this election was being fought on a completely uneven uh, ground. And that is why the numbers that we got, even if we did not uh, breach the halfway mark, even if we did not get 273, as an India Alliance, the numbers that we got are significant in this sense that despite all this, this constraint, people of India came together, the political parties came together, and they have worked to save democracy in this country. Thank you. That really helps. I, I, I wanted to uh, ask you a question as a Congress person. Uh, there seems to be two sets of uh, uh, playgrounds for you. One where you fought independently. I'm, I'm going to use a tennis analogy, like a grand slam, you went alone. And the other was with your regional parties. And you've done well in two, two sets of places, like places like Rajasthan, Haryana, you've gone alone. And even Karnataka, you've gone alone and you've done that grand slams. And then there are other places where you've gone, it's a bit like Davis Cup. You've gone with the regional parties and you've gone back and uh, shown whether it's, it's, uh, it's Maharashtra, whether it is uh, in other places where you've actually gone with the other parties, including UP, where you had a fabulous result. How do you see these two working? What did Congress do here well? And what do you think, uh, would you say that, and there has been criticism that maybe Congress wouldn't have been able to do all these things without the regional party, but the India Alliance was already, uh, already on. So can you help us understand the role of Congress when it went alone in Grand Slams and when, when it went like a Davis Cup? Well, I think if you have been following the news in last one year, on multiple occasions, Congress President Mr. Kharge publicly said that Congress is willing to make any sacrifice for the cause of coalition. Uh, Rahul Gandhi ji also said it, and he effectively pronounced it on more than one occasion, that we are ready to make any sacrifice. And we did make sacrifices. Uh, for record, this time, vis-a-vis uh, -vis 2019 election, we contested 96 seats less than 2019. So those 96 seats we shared with opposition parties who were the India Alliance allies. So this was a very clear cut, thought out uh, approach by Congress party that wherever an opposition party exists on ground, they have a space, let us come together and let us fight elections together. So the alliance was designed in a way that wherever coming together could defeat BJP, we came together. And wherever contesting against each other could defeat BJP, we contested against each other. Example, 
in delhi we did, we, fought, we thought that we have to fight together with amadi party but in punjab we fought against each other so that bjp does not get that space in kerala we fought against uh, the left front so that bjp doesn't get that space so but but in tamil nadu there was a perfect alliance in up there was a perfect alliance in uh, jharkhand there was a perfect alliance in bihar there was a perfect alliance so this approach was that we should not allow bjp to get away with what they are doing and that is why this sentiment was echoed by other parties also many a times we thought that uh, the, there's a unfair uh, demand being made on congress party but yet we went along and we we as i said we contested 96 seats less than last time but we ensured that the india alliance remains intact uh it was a collective effort by india alliance also uh, i would say that the parties eventually they behaved uh, uh, very maturely and also because there was a lot of ground pressure this time everybody is talking about up results or maharashtra results but if you have been to up and maharashtra during this election you'll find there was a near perfect synchronization of the cadres of the allied parties samajwadi and congress ally uh, workers they were uh, campaigning together which never happened in past in uh, shiv sena ncp and uh, congress party i'm talking of shiv sena uddhav thakre and ncp sharad pawar now those uh, the parties uh, and congress their workers were sharing the same space campaigning together so this there was a lot of energy from below also and this energy from below ensured the results that we have seen so it is not about uh, uh, playing a solo match a grand slam or a team effort it was designed so that we we did a scientific exercise wherever we were strong we decided to go alone wherever we found that we have a shared space with opposition party we decided to go in coalition like you said in rajasthan it was a grand slam no but rajasthan we uh, had three allies uh, and all three won yeah. the uh, bap party uh, uh, anwan benival's party rltp and cpim we gave one seat to each of them and we contested uh, three seats less and the alliance actually won uh, almost 12 seats so this is what was designed this time and lot of effort went to do it so many meetings happened and it was not a outcome of one meeting there was series of meetings week after week months after month the committee that uh, the congress party had formed uh, it had five members uh, they it kept on meeting at the residence of mr mukul wasnik uh, was the convener of the committee there were meetings at the residence of uh, mr khalge there were meetings which were much publicized also so it's not a one off thing that happened there's a lot of ground work which happened so not just it it should not look like a compulsion but a lot of strategic work went behind uh, and the ground team also came together it, that be the conclusion of that that work and not just you see in maharashtra uh, there was lot of negotiation and finally on one seat one seat on which we said sangli uh, that uh, the decision by our allies is not good and uh, yet we agreed to this uh, decision after after negotiating for more than 3 months but uh, ncp and ubt never agreed to our position and you see the person who won there was a independent person whom we wanted to give ticket and he has joined the alliance now he has joined he has given his support to congress party so wherever it was a very very hard negotiation which was done for each individual seat and that is why uh, in most of the cases there was a consensus on the final outcome so i wanted to just take this this seems unique for indian politics at least in the last 10 15 years right in the sense that there's a negotiation there's some bitter debates uh, is this maturity in indian politics which we are seeing that something like sangli happened and people were able to debate and you you're able to openly even say that that there was debates between that is this maturity in indian politics 
we are seeing here no this is not a new font maturity let us not forget that from 2004 to 2014 congress party led a U alliance called upa1 and upa2 and the full 10 years two terms we had a stable government so the structures and the uh, uh, what you say the ground rules were already there all these parties at some point of time had allied with congress party when we were in power from 4 to uh, 2004 to 14 so it was not a new thing it's not a new found maturity as you want to put it it's a it's it's something which has developed over decades now and this understanding also developed that coalition per se need not to be fragile coalition per se doesn't make a weak government coalition per se doesn't mean that uh, uh, it's a it's a negative point in democracy rather this understanding has developed in uh, two or three decades that coalitions actually mean that various interest groups various sections of the society they have a greater bargaining power they have a greater say in politics so in a way in a country as diverse as this india sometimes coalition is also uh, a desirable uh, thing in terms of uh, keeping the democracy alive so i am not saying that uh, we do not aspire to be the uh, dominant party which gets majority on its own we do aspire but we do say that coalitions per se are not a something which is negative for politics or for governance so this maturity has been there and this time when uh, we negotiated when we went out on each occasion that experience of upa 1 and 2 was somewhere a guiding force also and also because on certain occasions when uh, when there was uh, when it came stuck so we had people from that era like mrs sonia gandhi whom everybody in the opposition uh respects a lot looks uh, to her with a with lot of uh, uh, respect appreciation for what she has done so people like mrs uh, sonia gandhi people like malik arjun kharge people like sharad pawar uh, people like mr yechuri or uh, there are many uh, senior leaders in uh, in the opposition alliance uh, who are very good uh, in bringing about a balance uh, when it's required and they are well respected well acknowledged across the parties so that also helped their alliance to take shape yeah there's one more thing which we have heard in this uh, this election that this was between uh, a a bjp or a very strong right wing government and and an election between them and the people of india we saw two or three things happening one is of course lots of civil movements over the last 10 years whether it's the ca farmers protest etc various such protest uh, got the social uh, consciousness back into what was happening in the country uh, suddenly we saw that in elections we do need two things one is the narrative game and the other is the mobilization game the the social media which is not really part of corporate that is the non corporate media whether it's the influencers or whether it is ravish kumar or abishar and people like that who had started an independent one in youtube uh, their narrative started picking up a lot more and we also start, started seeing civil societies like edelu etc participating in elections these two things were a big boost and it looked like they were also very strategic i i surely know that the civil societies were working for one one and a half years in seeing where we should work how we should work and they were already working towards a place which could facilitate uh, a stronger democratic discussion how do you see the civil society and the political parties came together and somehow it seemed like bjp it cell did not work at all at, at some point anything which it tried to do um uh, fizzled out very very quickly and look like the they they are and, and i know they are very well orchestrated they very well financed how did you see this sitting inside a political system i get uh, one thing is very clear people who have been fighting the rss ideology in their office groups in their families in uh, public spheres 
most of them are not part of any political party they're not part of any political party yet they fight they fight within their families they fight with with their friends they want to put forward their point of view and this is a common experience because in last 10 years if you express anything against mr modi or his party or rss even the closest friends in in so many cases even the family people would just pounce on you you will be trolled not just in uh, uh, the terms of social media but you will be trolled ostracized in your real life also so this but these were the people who were fighting a ideological battle they are not part of a political party any political party yet they fight because they want a certain uh, uh, idea of india to shape up they want because they want intellect they want democratic rights they want freedom of speech they want a uh, right to protest they want equality in the country so these people were always there and we acknowledged their presence we always knew that this election is not just being fought by political parties it's also being contested by the people who have been fighting in their families and offices who have been fighting and taking up it on their chin yet putting a very strong resistance to the idea of rss and this was a very common occurrence throughout the country so it is not a surprise that when actual campaigning began all these people they aligned themselves with the political parties and suddenly the social media campaign as you say was being amplified not just by the political parties but also by these people who had staked their personal uh, uh, spaces against this divisive ideology so these people uh, they came together and there was a perfect alignment with political parties and also let us understand democracies do not survive because of political parties democracies survive because people want democracy and this time when suddenly people saw that what is at stake is democracy of india what is at stake is the constitution of india constitution which which guarantees you equality which guarantees you dignity because uh, this is one point on which not much has been uh, analyzed and discussed but dignity was a very big issue subconsciously in this country because people saw what was happening in manipur people saw what happened to uh, uh, so many cases uh, where atrocities took place against dalits and tribals when people saw what happened to women wrestlers when people saw to what was happening to ca protestants and farmer protestants this dignity which constitution of india uh, assures to every citizen that why do you need equality why do you need fraternity why do you need justice to ensure a life of dignity and in last 10 years this is something which was being attacked by the party in power which is bjp because they do not believe in dignity they believe in a different uh, formulation of constitutional values what is their formulation they believe that uh, pride they, they want a country based on the concept of pride not on dignity so when the farmers protest the issue that bjp uh, analyzed was not that whether the protest was for right reasons or wrong issue was whether the pride of the government was being hurt or not when when in manipur the the violence went on and on and the uh, videos came of women being paraded naked so it was not a, the government of india never thought of dignity to those people it thought of pride if we do something if we do not suppress the the pride of the prime minister will be uh, attack will we will, will suffer so in every case so this this became a subconscious thought also he look the constitution is there which which gives you this dignity where i can fight for my rights without being ridiculed where i can fight for my rights without being ostracized when i can fight for my rights without being said that you are a traitor or you are an anti national so this was being built up for last 5 years and suddenly when the election came all those people whether in form of civil society whether in form of individuals and you can see among your own circles also and your viewers will agree to it they would know so many cases where young children they were 
talking why this government should change where people were fighting so i think everybody had a role in this election this election was not just about political parties yeah i, I think that's something thank you for summarizing and coming from a political person from a political party it's it's quite amazing to hear that and 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 that's why i think it's an important part in indian history and politics uh, i i will slightly look ahead now uh, there are already laws which have been defined to cut two of the important elements of it one is the the social media the broadcasting laws and and the criminal laws themselves uh, this might be very uh, might be used to curb uh, and uh, curb these these two dimensions one is the social movements itself and the other is the social media which has been helping democratic voices uh, in a way we never thought about even 6 7 months ago whether it's the farmers protest whether it's the agni veer ca protest each of them have brought something something to the public consciousness i think the ca brought the constitution back the red book was back uh, citizenship was back in debate the farmers protest brought the farmers income farmers assurances we must give to the farmers back into discussion uh, the agni veer the protest told us the unemployment was a serious problem now how would india alliance which stands as an opposition protect uh, the the mass movements from these kind of laws uh, and how would it work to prevent these from curbing these mass movements well uh, the way forward is very simple now the confidence is back in political parties in the workers and people of india who believe in these values the government of india which is modi government now they call it nda government because it's no more modi government uh, we are, they, they, it has been cut to size now in the, the it's quite possible that it will continue on the same path same path of misuse of agencies same path where you will try to now introduce the new uh, codes now they called uh, sahita ipc and crpc have been replaced so there will be more draconian laws which might come in because bjp is not willing to listen to the message of this election they think that it was something which should not have happened which have happened they have still not come out with a single statement that they honor the message of the selection there is no statement from anybody in bjp or from the prime minister or from their top leadership so they 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 still think that it was their birthright to win hence down and that did not happen because of certain reasons and the reasons are that they could not manage the election as well as they should have done so now there is a there is very little hope that they'll draw the right a uh, message from these elections and do course correction and that is why there a demand on privacy bill the uh, sorry the uh, personal data protection bill there is still a demand on the broadcasting bill they are bringing in the new uh, penal codes the sahitas that they call and they have the might to introduce them but one thing is there people who oppose them parties who oppose them have now got a voice and we will continue to oppose them to the level that common people understand what is wrong with this this is incumbent on congress party this is incumbent on india alliance parties that we now start communicating to people to look why these draconian laws should be repealed and if they are not repealed we create a resistance in this country so that this government is thrown out whenever we get a chance and these laws are repealed as far as the, the social media uh, regulation is concerned i we fear we do we we we, we do think and i you you'll agree to this that they will do everything in their power to curb this independence of social media they have tried it they tried it during the elections also during the elections so many uh, platforms were taken off on the complaint of the ministry of information broadcasting and we appealed to election commission that time that when during the election no decision can be taken without the permission of uh, election commission of india 
why ministry of information broadcasting is allowed to do this act against the youtubers but but uh, no action was taken in this matter by election commission of india so that tells us that in coming days they will try to curb this but more they do it i think we are a huge country and in this country has reaffirmed its faith in democratic struggles in democratic rights in democratic systems so there will be a response from people and political parties both and this struggle is going to continue for some time now because now earlier for uh, almost seven decades we had one set of values in this country which was largely defined by congress ideology which came out of the freedom struggle which came out of the karachi resolution which came out of which was condensed in form of uh, constitution and everybody took our constitution for granted for six decades in fact we had stopped talking about constitution i don't think anybody was so bothered about even the constitution and its values because we took it for granted in last 10 years there was a uh, unbridled uh, journey and uh, unhindered journey uh, of rss to say that everything in the constitution is wrong now there is a new world view after this election now there are two ideologies competing ideologies there are people who subscribe to rss ideology and world view and there is there are people who subscribe to constitutional idea of india and this has to continue for next year. so what is important is the india alliance and congress party it starts working on rebuilding the organization b it it enhances its communication with people of india knowing fully well that they have an audience who believes in them and c start winning state elections these are the three pronged approaches and fourth in parliament be a very effective opposition to all these wrong legislation being brought in by bjp and some of them have been passed by previous uh, lok sabha so they are now actually the uh, law of the land so we have to fight against them and this is going to be there and i must uh, tell you that we are very motivated as i think you are also and all your people uh, most of the viewers who are watching this program they all now have this confidence yes this is democratic struggle will now reach a finality and will be able to finally ensure that the constitution and its value are saved and reestablished in india so here i wanted to ask that public uh, movements or civic movements uh, have worked very closely with the opposition in some sense and i think there was a common goal uh, and we will perhaps see in some other places maybe in states where these public movements and the state government which could be india alliances partners it could be congress or somebody else it will not match uh, or it will be in loggerheads for different reasons and i'm not even saying who is right who is wrong but they will be in loggerheads uh so this this uh, loggerheads could mean that there would be uh, discussions which need to happen at a state level for example what has happened in in karnataka especially in hasan uh, there are lots of protests by women saying that we need further better actions out there right so that in that in this scenario it's a congress government and here we have women organizations trying to talk and debate about how this should go forward right how do you see india alliance and specifically in this case congress working with civil societies because there will be places i i will assume where the civil opposition will be against the congress so they will not be aligned but still there needs to be a communication which must happen which i think happened on the political party level like you said people had uh, differences of opinion but the political parties came together with a majority how does political parties and civil movements come up with an alignment that this kind of differences are okay and one must listen to the other to find a better way to run a democracy i wanted your view about it and also if you want to expand it to expand it because it's slightly more complex than what i said you see uh, because of coercive uh, policies of bjp government modi government last two terms the entire structure of civil society has also undergone a change in after 90s the civil society had actually transformed into a professional non government organization structure 
now that has been crushed also the civil society used to be uh, largely advocacy groups also which were unifocal in their approach every section of the civil society had uh, used to militate one point of view which was uh, largely concerned with only their sector but once the structure of the civil society was uh, a lot of lot of uh, coercive action happened against them the civil society itself under went a change and we had a civil society which started talking more about basic values democratic values rather than their own advocacy groups they started talking about constitutional values rather than promoting their uh, uh, agenda on which they used to identify themselves with so the civil society suddenly was not the professional civil society which this country had seen in last 2 3 decades but it was a civil society which was largely political in nature it was not part of the political party but it was speaking a political language it was speaking a language of rights it was speaking a language of protest it was speaking a language of uh, working at the grassroots to ensure that the democratic setup the democratic system are defended so the civil society itself moved now the civil society will be more aggressive as i see because they have also fought they have also fought for uh, democracy and all the rights that come with democracy as far as congress party is concerned and i think the top leadership is crystal clear about it congress party has always advocated a space where people can protest and people can express so that is not limited to individuals that is that also extends to civil society it's a conscious decision of congress party to have a constitution which provides you freedom of speech and freedom of uh, freedom to protest it came out of our freedom struggle it started the, the entire thing was conceptualized and placed before the nation in 1931 in karachi resolution that jawaharlal nehru uh, the young uh, president of aicc that time he was a very young person under the guidance of mahatma gandhi he formulated it and placed it before nation and in that it was very clear that in independent india there will be equality there will be a vote for everyone there will be right to protest and there will be freedom of speech it was very well articulated from 31 to 1950 when the constitution was promulgated congress party championed these values that time rss was also there it was formed in 1925 26 but rss never championed these values rss never ever and and its uh, sarsang chalaks beat higdewar beat others they have written books after books they are they are they are people like savarkar whom they venerate a lot they have written books after books but in not a single book in not a single article you'll find any mention of freedom of speech or protest right to protest or equality it it had a very different set of values but congress championed the values and when congress party was the dominant party in india under jawaharlal nehru under indira gandhi under rajiv gandhi under narsimha rao dr manmohan singh except an aberration of emergency congress party always tried to create a structure where the media was free where people could protest where people could speak and speaking means that there will be some people who will uh, uh, come and uh, negotiate with you there will be people who will come and protest against your decisions there will be people who will say look this is what you are doing wrong so beat karnataka beat telangana beat himachal beat government of india the very fact that we say that there will be a right to protest there will be freedom of speech it means the same civil society which fights with us to protect the constitution and democracy will also on various occasion may or may not but in may, many cases it may raise its voice against our decisions also and that is what democracy is all about and i think even today even today we are in power in tamil nadu we are in power in telangana we are in power in uh, himachal three states we are ruling today in these three states we have a template given by bjp and other parties also in and i'll not just keep it to bjp who are ruling the template says 
how to control media. The template is not known, but are we controlling media in these states? We have learned the lesson. We know how it is to be controlled, but we are not doing it. The template says how to crush civil society. We all know now it has been crushed, but are we crushing them in these three states? No. So this is not that something that Congress party doesn't know. It is something that Congress party doesn't want to do, will never do. So there may be occasion where we may have a, uh, a relationship which is not uh, uh, perfectly synchronized with the civil society. Our government's decisions may be criticized, but this is the India that we want. We want uh, that our decisions are debated. We want that our decisions are criticized, but in a spirit of exchange of views, in a spirit where we strengthen democracy and then use that space to ensure better decision making. And there will be occasions everywhere where all our decisions may not be liked by everyone. But this is the country that we want. Thank you so much. I, I want to leave you with one last question. One is, what is Congress promising to do as the parliament session is going to start? And two, and, and your response to two sets of people. One, who are not really Congress supporters, uh, but have supported this democratic idea. And the civil society, which actually may not even be a Congress supporter, as you said, but have supported this uh, protection of the democratic values. So what would India Alliance do? And what is your message to the individual voter who did not vote for you, but does support the opposition and the civil society, which has always or maybe has occasionally opposed you? What is your message today? So your own responsibility and your message. It's a simple message that you have unchained the political parties and Congress party. You have told the nation that go ahead and fight for the right cause. So Congress party will fight from the right cause now. A, in parliament, there are issues, there are issues of uh, the scam, the share scam that happened, uh, which was uh, behind the garb of uh, exit polls, where 31 lakh crore was ripped off from common investors. There is the issue of need. Uh, need, the students are suffering. And these are the students, most of them may have voted or their parents may have voted for BJP, for Mr. Narendra Modi. Yet, all their hard work, whatever they did, they are not being evaluated in a fair manner. In this country, the system that Congress gave, there was one confidence that if we study well, we'll grow. Now, need takes away that confidence that even if we study well, we will not be examined fairly. This confidence in the systems of this country that this country values and ensures fair examination is shattered. So we have to fight that because, because the again I'll say all those people who were critical of opposition and were Modi supporters are feeling cheated by the same media when the same media who criticized then opposition is not taking up their issue, which is neat, which is ugly with. Because these are common people. So as opposition party, we are going to take it up. Next, we have given very solemn commitments on social justice. We are going to champion it. Champion it in politics and also ensure that there is a greater representation of various communities in the organization of Congress party from the grassroots level, because that's how now we want to go to the next level of social justice uh, agenda that uh, Rahul Gandhi has so well articulated in these elections. And then we are going to intensify our relationship with civil society. We are going to have a very active outreach program with civil society. We are going to be with them because this fight against the uh, BJP ideology has not culminated. It's a, it's, it's just a battle which has been uh, not even fully won, but it has been won in some degree. 
the war remains and this war is to be won because it cannot be that we have uh, uh, we have uh, clipped the wings of uh, uh, modi government but we allow them to now champion their ideology and change the constitution in years to come that cannot happen so our engagement with civil society our engagement with uh, uh, people who believe in us and who have supported us has to now intensify has to increase if we don't do that then i think we will not be doing a justice to the mandate that we got and then we have to win the state elections the elections which are coming up and uh, we have started working on them now uh, this week itself 24 to 27 congress president uh, rahul gandhi ji everybody is coming together holding meetings with the state leaders how and we have started our planning we have already started working we have not taken rest you said that some people have gone to vacation we are not gone we have started working and uh, this is our agenda that in parliament on road in social media civil society election we have to be more active and we have to do better than what we did in lok sabha election lok sabha election was fought in an environment where people did not believe that we can do good it was fought in an environment where people did not believe that uh, uh, the rss ideology can be challenged it was fought in an environment where people did not believe that propaganda can be undone now people believe and now once they believe we have to do start working with them in greater measure i i think what you leave us is a hope what you leave us with idea that the political parties will come together the civil society although there will be differences but there is a huge hope that we'll be able to work together between the differences let's not that call them differences economy. let's not call them differences there's a diversity of opinion diversity of opinion is not a difference it is something to be celebrated and it is incumbent on people who hold that opinion to convince others this is how uh, a knowledge based society a democratic society should function so i will never call them differences and that's why i uh, intervened well, absolutely right with diversity of uh, of uh, opinions and i remember that there was this comment uh, during the time of akbar ki governance should be rahe aql i think i, I would my teacher had expanded saying rahe mohabbat bhi honi chahiye so it should not just be of governance but it should be of love and the diversity of opinions can come together if there is love and solidarity and i think thank you so much for spending the time in explaining some bit of what happened and what we can look forward to uh, I, i we would also want to say that politicians should take rest people who don't seem to sleep uh, don't seem to sleep make wrong decisions so people resting <laughs> perhaps will make better decisions that's what uh, well, you know well well i i just say one thing i have actively opposed this concept that people should work 16 hours like uh, many industries have now started saying this is a 8 hours job for i'm not talking for politicians now for people these are rights which which the humanity has won after great struggles yes we cannot let it go and exactly. resting resting is a basic human right and i think somewhere this discourse which has dominated in past few years ki people should work for 14 hours people should work for 16 hours they should not get rest and and our labor laws have reflected it in last few years now that needs to be challenged absolutely some human rights need to be honored and protected because it took centuries of struggle to arrive where we are yes absolutely thank you so much uh, and again to audience of edena this is a discussion uh, on on how the elections were won and what we can look in the future with someone who has been a part of the political system and has been navigating with the indian alliance and is is also putting a path forward and how it will look like so uh, with a lot of hope we end this uh, discussion uh, and thank you so much uh for you know, you. attending this long discussions we in your busy schedule gurdeep ji thank you so much uh, and i'll stop and thank you for inviting me
ಮತ್ತಷ್ಟು ವಿಶೇಷ ವಿಡಿಯೋಗಳನ್ನು ನೋಡಲು ಮತ್ತು ಹೊಸ ವಿಡಿಯೋಗಳ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ತಿಳಿಯಲು ಈ ದಿನ ಡಾಟ್ ಕಾಮ್ ಯೂಟ್ಯೂಬ್ ಚಾನೆಲ್ ಸಬ್ಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬ್